What's going on guys, Aaron from Top Tier Gaming here and today I'm coming at you with a side deck tier list for after Power of the Elements. We actually got quite a few new side deck cards in Power of the Elements that can really change up sort of the side deck metagame to say the least. A little bit of a disclaimer when it comes to like a side deck tier list. One, you will see that there are no hand traps on this tier list and that's because there is a hand trap tier list, right? So I rank the hand traps there. These are more side deck specific cards, you know, they're not. And like when you say something like a side deck card, right? Like they can be main decked in certain decks and certain decks play different side deck cards than other decks. So this is a very generalized tier list for side deck cards relevant to this format. If I've left a couple off, you can leave down which cards I didn't mention down below in the comments. I did just make this tier list, so there might be one or two I forgot. Feel free to leave those down below. I'll make sure to add them for the next side deck tier list. But yeah, I'm gonna go through all of these, sort of say how they do this format and sort of what's, you know, the best side deck cards you can play right now. Again, Different decks play different side deck cards, this is more generalized, but we are here to rank side deck cards for after Power of the Elements. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, I went ahead and gave us some tier options here being meta, good options, outclass but still okay, suboptimal, and oof. Uh, so we will rank them according to these parameters. I do want to let you guys know, Discord link down below if you want to follow the channel more closely along with all of our other social media links. Also, I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you do enjoy this type of Yu-Gi-Oh! content and you want to see more of it, feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps me out in what I do here on the channel. But yes, let's get to ranking. So starting off, we have Alpha, and Alpha is sort of in an interesting spot because of Duke Frog specifically. Like, Alpha would be amazing versus the Sprite matchup and would be just a great card this format, but Dupe Frog is being played in like 50% of sprite lists, so it's really hard to rank Alpha and in turn Panker Tops. I'll sort of do both at the same time. I think they're like okay right now. I think Panker Tops is a little better than Alpha. Eh, they're about the same, right? Like Panker Tops is a little better than Alpha. I'm gonna put them in outclass, but still okay. I mean, maybe they're good options, right? Like. Uh, no, I'll put it like this. So I'll put Pankratops here because Pankratops usually finds itself being good versus back row decks as well and more like roguish strategies and it's chainable. Alpha is definitely outclassed by Pankratops, but is not a bad card. Like, it definitely works in some strategies. Like, I played it in Dinomorphia because it's a trap deck and I can afford to play these giant beat sticks going second where my trap deck is a little weaker. But overall, with Dupe Frog in the meta, it's like really weird to play either of these, but I still think one pank is definitely something I play in all of my side decks, if the deck can function with pank. Uh, that being said, I'm sort of going to rank those here. Anti-spell, I'm going to put in meta. This card is disgusting, it's been disgusting, everyone knows anti-spell is disgusting, we've been complaining about this card ever since essentially Imperial Order got banned, and that's because... Cards that shut down an entire mechanic, I'm not even talking about the pendulum mechanic, of course this shuts that down, but just spells in general. It is very hard when decks are putting up insane boards where the only answer is cards like Dark Ruler and then you can be anti-spelled and your out is now outed, which I do think countersiding needs to be in the game, like it's good to have a side deck for your opponent's side deck, especially if you're going first, otherwise you might just lose. But Anti-Spell does it in a very toxic manner. It's like two free, uh, it's a really powerful card. So it's definitely a meta pick. You should be siding this if you can, if you're not like a heavy spell deck or you need more go first side. A Pointer of the Red Lotus, I think is probably like the best side deck card this format, at least in its early stages. The reason being, leading up to this format, a lot of people have decided that Lava Golem and Sphere Mode are very powerful cards. Some tier element lists, I've even seen main deck those cards. And like, when you look at a Pointer of the Red Lotus compared to something like Solemn Judgment, right? This can actually stop things like Kaiju's Lava Golem Sphere Mode, where a card like Judgment cannot. Uh, and that leaded, like, leaded. That led a pointer to sort of get like in the spotlight going into this format. I think a lot of people have found that a pointer is a very good card. It's kind of as good as it's always been, but now it is particularly good for getting rid of things like Dark Ruler No More that is seeing play in main decks, getting rid of like uh, potentially Super Poly depending on the deck you're playing. Like if you summon in main phase potentially, then you might get Super Poly later, but you can a pointer it away. Something like Dinomorphia, for example. Um, but yeah, you just get rid of your opponent's board breakers and that makes a pointer very, very good. And yeah, it's definitely a meta side deck pick right now. Forbidden Chalice, I'm gonna put in Suboptimal. 
Uh, it's just not as good as Droplet, and even Forbidden Droplet has sort of fallen off this format, so not much to say about Chalice. It's a generically good one-for-one -one trade. I think when cards like Shen Shen or even Winda are in the format more than they are right now, Chalice is like better. And yes, I know Winda is in the format, tier elements can make it, but if you look at recent regional reports or if you've played a lot of this format already, Winda is sort of like a backup option for them. It's not like a main play and it's actually been phasing out a little bit. There's been less Winda for tier elements. Definitely still prepare for it, but I do think there are better cards to do it than something like Forbidden Chalice. Cosmic Cyclone. I mean, it's a good option, right? Like, back row destruction, like, uh, you could say something like Twin Twister outclasses Cosmic, right? Because it pops too, but it really doesn't. Like, Cosmic is in a league of its own, but so is Twin Twister. You need them for different things, so I'm just going to put it as good back row destruction, like, as an option. Kurikara Div Incarnate. Now, this is a new card from Power of the Elements, and I think this card is fantastic, but not this format. I think, like, right now... I'm gonna put outclassed, but still okay. Uh, actually, I'm gonna put suboptimal. And it pains me to do this because I think this card in a format like previous Dragon Link decks before even Brave, you know, like maybe last year's Dragon Link, Sword Soul to an extent, um, decks that are putting out like an actual board with negates, right? Something we haven't seen for, I guess, a minute because Konami's kind of phased those decks out. But decks that put up a lot of negates like Savage, uh, even Borlen to an extent, but that one, it, you know, is a little different. Uh, Hot Red, Baron, you know, these type of cards that stick on field have multiple negates, Opelousa. In formats where those are like key, this card could be an insane side deck card. Like it is pretty gosh darn good and it can win games on its own to an extent. You can like tribute a Baron, summon like a 6,000 attack destroyer of worlds and then take their Baron at end phase. It's kind of disgusting. But I do think this format, the negates we have are more like totally awesome which is removing itself from board anyways. Uh, tier elements have like a trap interrupt and then they're summoning during your main phase at times, so it makes Curry Car a little weird there. We have Exo Sisters that are also doing things. Like, we, like the decks we have aren't putting up negates that this card wants to deal with. Like this card is decent, but why play this card over something like Dark Ruler No More that shuts down Totally Awesome, right? Like Totally Awesome is the main card this format that I think is shutting down this card from being good. But there's also things like Window, which is a continuous, like I said it's not much in the format, but cards like Window that are putting a continuous floodgate effect out there. This card's not great versus those. And I think that's one of the things people fear the most in the tier element deck. But this thing can also hit things like Time Thief Redoer uh, and Preta Plant Drago Stapelia. So it, it definitely has its uses, but I do think it's not good this format. So that was a lot for this card, but it's a new card, so I wanted to talk about it. Then we have Dark Ruler No More, that's a meta pick. If this card isn't in your main deck as a lot of players are doing, because you know, you might want to play more of a, either go first or go second in your game one, uh, this should definitely be in your side deck. This is a one card, destroy the sprite board, it is disgusting, this card is insane. 100% a meta pick this format. Droplet, I'm gonna put in good option now. The reason Droplet has sort of fallen off is we're in a format where things aren't happening in standby phase, right? Like think back to Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, Popping Scythe in standby. Dark Ruler could not do anything, and therefore it was not good. We needed cards like Droplet because they are quick play, but right now, there's almost no difference in negating your entire your opponent's entire board in main phase as something in draw phase, or in uh, standby phase, or draw phase, I guess. There's also not too many cards that are like summoning in the middle of a turn. Think back to Shureg and Tri Brigade format where Droplet again was king because you needed to wait for their revolt and then drop their board, essentially. Um, but this format, because of the way the sprite board sets up, and even tier elements to an extent, you just slam Dark Ruler and you can go just straight ham, and it's really, really good. And Droplet costs too much card advantage to even make it considering instead of Dark Ruler. Now, I think you can play both in your side deck if you really wanted to, um, but yeah, I do think Droplet is less good than Dark Ruler. Evenly matched. I'm gonna put it in good option. I think versus monster decks, this card is definitely outclassed or even suboptimal like monster decks just don't really care about this but this versus back row decks is insane so i think this is just still a good option because it does hit both monsters and back row similar to lightning storm it's like a dual purpose card and i think those cards are usually pretty good because they're sort of like they save a lot of space in your side deck like you don't need to run three raigeki and then three twin twister you could run like three evenly match and sort of do the job of both right uh kaijus they're okay they're not as good as some of the other 
bad. Like, there's not any... Like, adding Nistra isn't super popular, and it has, you know, a Towers, something like... Uh, Drytron, they're playing Vanity's Ruler, which stopped Kaijus. Uh, there's, like, Dragoon isn't in the, in the format, or DPE, where you need to get rid of something by not, like, destroying it, and you need to tribute it, so Kaijus are kinda iffy. Uh, I have a picture of Gamma Seal to represent all Kaijus, but again, this format... Gar Gadarla is the kaiju you want to be playing because of the Wanderees, but I digress. Goes in match, uh, it's a good option. This is more of a deck dependent pick. It hits Sprite, doesn't hit tier element, but if you're siding it for Sprite, of course it's amazing. We'll go ahead and put Rivalry in the same. Uh, I think they're both about what and what right now. I think Gozen, eh. Gozen's a little better than Rivalry in my opinion. Like, different decks play different cards, but I do think that Gozen is a little better than Rivalry, but it's still okay. Lava Golem is, uh, it's a good option. I don't want to put it in meta. Well, mm, I do think you should be expecting to see Lava Golem this format. Ah, uh, it's tough. Like, I don't think Lava Golem is good enough to call meta, but I do think if your deck can play it, it's very, very good. And decks that don't need their normal summon play this, you know, of course, Eldritch and stuff, tier elements to an extent. This card's good, but, you know, it has competition, and I'm not as, like, I'm not sure it's as good as these. Light Imprisoning. Oof, I put this on this tier list because if we're going to have Shadow Imprisoning on the tier list, which we do, uh, this is good for the future, but this format, obviously this is a giant oof, you wouldn't play this card. Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm's a good option. Um, yeah, Lightning Storm's a good option. I feel like back row removal is going to find itself in good option most of the time because there's such a limited amount of great back row removal as opposed to like cards that stop back row hate, like something like Anti-Spell. Um, but yeah, Lightning Storm is fantastic, sort of like evenly matched where it does double duty, right? Like it can hit the monster decks, it can hit the back row decks, so yeah, Lightning Storm's a good option, I definitely think. Red Reboot, that's an S tier right there, that's, you know, this is the best card. This card better be in your side deck for most decks. Now, like, not every deck can play Reboot, like I remember I was playing Marincess without Reboot for a very long time, uh, because, like, you have no kill power and you might lose if you Reboot, right? So... Decks that are slow or maybe trap decks, they don't play this card, but this card is insane for almost every single deck. It is sometimes the only out to certain cards. Think of a card like Deck Devastation Virus that is running rampant, and there's nothing like the lingering floodgates that can't be hit by back row removal. This is the only out in the game. It fills a role no other card can do except like Designator, and you have the card in your side deck as well. Uh, but Reboot is in a league of its own as far as back row hate. It is it literally only has a couple counters in the game, like Judgment and Bribe. But yeah, Reboot, insane card, definitely amazing. Shadow Imprisoning, I'm going to put in good options. Like, this specifically hits Tier Element the hardest, but it's really good versus Sprite as well. It turns off Blue, it turns off Jet, it turns off Gigantic. Meaning this card can actually be very difficult to deal with. And, like, even Sprite will have troubles... Like, outing this card because Jet can't search Smashers, and that's really good. This destroys Tier Element. It's pretty good versus actually a lot of decks this format. Like, it still hits Dragon Link to name one. It hits Chaos Ruler and, like, Punk decks, although I don't think I would side this for Punk. Maybe for Dragon Ruler. Not Dragon Ruler. Sheesh! Dragon Link, because you turn off a lot of their deck with this, so... I do think Shadow Imprisoning is a good option. Ultimate Slayer. This is another brand new card from Power of the Elements. To sort of shake up things, I think, personally, this card is insane. I just took Exo Sister to a regional and I actually got first place. And this was the biggest part of my side deck. I absolutely loved this card. Every time I resolved it, it was great. Do I want to put it in good option or meta, though, is the question. It's definitely either here or here. Um, I just don't think a lot of people are playing it, so it's really hard for me to call it meta. But it's so good. Like, I really feel like it should be... I'm gonna put it in good options. I feel like people still need to test with this card a little bit, let it exist in the format a while, and then we'll see more and more how good it is, but also only certain decks can play this, right? Like decks with a very tight extra deck will find huge troubles playing this card, but decks with a couple of flex spots, this card's amazing. Like you run Trouble Sunny as a Link or Farajit, or if you're playing something like Tri Brigade, you could run Shureg, which is really awesome. You run things like Natis. You run things like Omega or Wind Pegasus, and you can run for Xyz. Really just totally awesome. Xyz needs a great Ultimate Slayer target, but usually it's fine. And yeah, the, the fact that it targets kind of stinks, doesn't out something like Dragoon, but it can't be responded to similar to Dark Ruler, and it can out other things other than monsters, like in the sense where you can send a Tease or Trouble Sunny to pop a back row, right? 
um, and it's like really good because it can't be responded to essentially and I, I really like it for essentially that reason that, that's a, that's a good enough reason it can't be responded to and like you also get the bonus effects like you could run Garura and get a free draw essentially right it does some things that Dark Ruler doesn't do where's Dark Ruler up here and most importantly you can OTK through this card that is a big 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 benefit to something like Ultimate Slayer is you can beat them that turn because oftentimes with Dark Ruler going second, you're able to clear their board, but you can't, you know, beat them and you set up like an okay board with some negates, uh, but their follow-up sometimes can play through it and then Dark Ruler helped you beat the board, but you still lost the game and Ultimate Slayer doesn't fall into the same trap, which I really like if you can still OTK your opponent. Sphere Mode, definitely a good option, sort of in the same vein as Lava Golem, essentially pretty much same card. Uh, I'm hoping that my webcam isn't covering up this fear mode at this point, but yeah, fear mode is as good as Lava Golem. They sort of compete with each other. I wouldn't say one is outclassed. Personally, I think Lava Golem is better than Sphere mode because not always will your opponent put three monsters on board, but this format, Sphere mode has been a pretty strong contender. TC Boo, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, this card's really good, but only a few decks can play it. I... Hmm, TC Boo's really weird to rank. Not every deck can play this card, but if... Okay, so, mm, I'm gonna put in a good option. So, if your deck... Like, these are sort of decks or cards that every single deck can play and you can expect them. These are sort of options that some decks can play. Not every deck can play TC Boo, but if you can, it's fantastic. It's really good versus Sprite, obviously, because they can only control one Thunder Monster. Uh, it's really good versus Tier, to some extent. Maybe this card's not as good as I'm giving it credit for. Uh, I'm gonna say it's okay. It's like good versus very specific Cyburst decks. Good versus Rika. Good versus Exosister. Dang, maybe it is good. Some of these cards are really hard to rank, and I've been to two regionals that can sort of help me, like, think on the playing field and what we've seen recently, but no, I'm putting in good option. Yeah, it's good. Twin Twister, another good option. Again, well, actually, I'm gonna say this card's outclassed. Um, is it really outclassed? Okay, here's the thing, right? This format, it's not like Prank Kids format where you needed to hit Pandemonium and Standby Phase, right? Like, it right now, the only card this card is as good, like, really good against is Fluanderese, where you can hit their trap because that is a main phase only activation. Um, technically, this can hit Vodis, not Vodis, uh, Returnia. I'm thinking of it, no, Arment. This can hit Arment? No. Excuse me, I just did really well with Exosister, but I can't think of card names. Pax. Pax is a main phase only effect, so technically this can hit that, and it's great versus Exosister, but honestly, I don't think there are enough decks in the format that are standby specific like Prank Kids that would make this as good as something like Lightning Storm, but Cosmic has its own role in Banishing, so it's still fair enough to be up here. Viruses. So... This is going to be Deck Devi and Erad. I've seen people play both. They're both about just as good, but if we're talking about Deck Devastation Virus, I'm going to put that in meta pick right now. That card is insane. Like, it is so good. Now, I think it definitely has a weird matchup in Tier Element, right? Does Deck Devi destroy? No, it discards, right? Deck Devi discards? Okay. Here's a caveat. If Deck Devi destroys, it's not good versus Tier. If it discards, then it's good versus Tier. I, for some reason, I think it destroys. Um, either way, Deck Devi is seeing a lot of play this format, and it is very good. And Erad, I've seen in some sprite lists as well, and it is very good versus back row decks or something like Sky Striker, so definitely good. Uh, I'm gonna put Feather Duster in good options. It's Feather Duster, what do you want me to say? It's like with Reboot and Pankratops. These, uh, you know what, the Trinity lines up pretty nice here. This has been like the holy trinity of the side deck for a long time. And yeah, it's still relatively solid. Solemn Judgment, I'm gonna put in Outclass, but still okay. A Pointer is better than Judgment this format. There are some decks that can't play a Pointer, like I didn't play an Exosister because I usually wanna set my entire hand if I'm able to, unless Cast Patel searched, but like I feel like you should be playing a Pointer first this format and then Judgment. That's my opinion. I think you can play both, it's something I do in Rika. But yeah, I think Judgment is outclassed by a pointer. Super Poly, absolutely insane. If you can be playing this card, you should be playing this card. It destroys. Since Garura's release, this card is bonkers. Like the OCG, one, I think it's not at three in the OCG. So that's something that is assisting us over here playing Super Poly. 
but two, they don't have Garura, and that card single-handedly has made this card insane this format, versus so many decks, that card is so good. If you have extra deck space and you feel like you can play Super Poly, this card is huge this format, just out the sprite board for the most part, like they can kind of play around it if they don't summon off Toad, but you usually can still take Red and Elf, which is good, and you can make Garura, so this card, phenomenal. Raigeki, it's outclassed, it's okay. Which is so crazy to see. Every time I see a tier list with Raigeki on it and it's not good, you think back to the old days and you're like, this is crazy. How is Raigeki at 3? How is it not great? It's just not as good as something like Dark Ruler or Evenly Mash or Droplet. It doesn't just do enough. It just gets negated, right? Or the monsters themselves want to be destroyed or can't be destroyed. So, like, this is good versus Fluanderese specifically. It's not bad versus Exosister. It still has matchups. It's okay. When Virtual World's in a format, this card's usually pretty good. But right now, definitely outclassed. But, yeah, that is going to be it for this tier list. There's a couple things I'm hoping in the future will change. One, like, some of these cards not being here anymore, like Anti-Spell. I wish this would get banned, but it just got a CR. Super Poly 2, I hope that card goes one day. And I'm really hoping Div Incarnate gets better because I want to see this card like around here. I really like this card. I think it has such great potential, just not this format. Either way, that's going to be it for this tier list video. Leave down below in the comments what you think. What are your thoughts? How would you rank the side deck tier list? Did I miss a card? I will be sure to read the comments and see what I missed because I'm sure. Like, I already know there's a couple of cards that aren't on, like, aren't on here. Like the band played on, like Mischief of the Gnomes. Cards that are like Zombie World, for example, I should be adding a couple of those, I guess, but these were the most relevant side deck cards right now, right? But feel free to leave your side deck cards down below. I'm getting a call, so I guess that is it for me. This has been Aaron from Top Tier Gaming. Bye, YouTube. Bro, you called me in the middle of a video. You called me in the middle of a video.